Hello everyone, Juicebags here, and welcome back to a little Minecraft Tech It for 1.6.4. Today we're going to be taking a look at Big Reactors. Uh, awesome new mod that was added in, or not necessarily new mod, but a mod that's new to the Tech It series. And uh, it's added in and working on this version of Tech It for 1.6.4. This is Tech It version 1.2.6b which uh, at the time of this video is the latest version of Tekkit and we're going to go ahead and show you how these big reactors work. Now I've got my first one built here. Uh, this one is a 7x7 and today I'm going to build a duplicate 7x7 right next to it. And why do you ask is the yellorium ore or yellor yellorium ingots that power the reactors produce a cyanite ingot waste and uh, that waste can be used to power a second reactor. So let's go ahead and get things started off here. First off, you're going to need some reactor casings. You can make these reactor casings by combining four iron ingots, four graphite bars, and then a yellorium ingot or an enriched uranium from Atomic Science is going to give you the reactor casing. So it's nice that these uh, these mods play play well with each other. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, get our casings lined down. We're going to build a duplicate reactor as this one, which is going to be 7x7. Seven seven. Now, uh, before we go any further, you get that yellorium. Uh, it's pretty abundant. Uh, you're going to get it from mining, and just like your other ores, you can throw that into a pulverizer. It's going to pulver pulverize it down into uh, two yellorium dust, and that's how you're going to get the most bang for your buck there. So let's give... Uh, a couple of spaces here and we're going to do another 7x7 seven seven. so uh, basic basic frame here I'm going to go ahead and get that built out and we will be right back in alright so we've got our frame in place uh, we went 7x7 seven seven and 7 tall this is actually 6 tall as you need to fill in the base of it and make the bottom complete there and then uh, in the front here is where we're going to be putting our controls and our input and output so I went on and uh, put two more rows of the reactor casings in here. Now next we basically want to fill in the gaps with reactor glass. Now reactor glass is going to be made by using one casing and two just regular glass. That makes it nice. Um, initially when this was, was released you needed to have hardened glass. That's no longer the case. So it uh, makes it a little bit easier to come by. Now the um, the texture on this glass can be a little tricky if you're not paying attention, and that is it's easy to miss spots. So you want to pay you know close attention as you're filling in, and make sure that you have all of your spots full. See if you're not, uh, I mean obviously we can see this is an empty hole here, but if you're going quick or it's later night or whatever the case is, you might miss that. So let me go ahead and fill in my glass now. So we've got our glass filled in all the way around. We did leave the top open because now we want to go ahead and hop on inside here. Maybe if my power suit use doesn't fail me here. And we want to put in some yellorium fuel rods. Now the fuel rods are going to be made with six iron ingots, two graphite bars, and then a yellorium ingot or an enriched uranium from atomic science. Now, the fuel rods, you want to make sure that you're leaving area all the way around for our coolant to touch the sides of the fuel rods. And we're gonna go ahead and stack those all the way up until we're almost to the top. We wanna leave one tile up top where we're gonna uh, be throwing our control rods in on top of it. So let me get those guys filled in. Right, so we got our fuel rods filled in. As you see, we got four fuel rods. Uh, these particular fuel rods are five high, which um, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of experimenting to find out what is the optimum setup. Uh, so there's been some debate as to uh, how big on these reactors you can go and maximize the output of them, and uh, you can be assured that that information will be up on my channel here pretty soon. Now to cap these fuel rods off, we want to go ahead and throw on reactor control rods, and these are obviously for uh, keeping the reactor cool. 
you're going to make the uh, control rods by using four reactor casings, three graphite bars, one redstone, and then one yellowium ingot or enriched uranium from Atomic Science. So just pop those bad boys right in on top. And now it's time to add in our coolant. Now, one of the interesting things with big reactors is depending on what you use for coolant, you're going to be able to get a uh, modifier that's going to increase the uh, potential of the reactor itself. Um, so far, the best thing I've found is the uh, resident ender. Of course, uh, you're going to have to liqu liquefy some ender pearls, and that's going to get you some resident ender. So we want to go one tile down and go ahead and fill in all of the gaps with our resident ender, which I will go ahead and do now. Okay, so it's all filled in. Now it is important to note, it's going to take 15 buckets of resident ender in the 7x7 setup to get all of these filled in. Now it doesn't matter if the liquid that you use as your coolant is flowing or not. So uh, you want to, you know, use the minimum amount that you need to maximize the area of coverage. As you see, we're uh, we're flowing down all the way to the bases. So uh, we've got that we've got those fuel rods cooled all the way around. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in the gaps. I'm just using reactor cases or reactor casings, pardon me. Once we get the gaps all filled in, we're just about complete, but we need to add in a couple more items. Now, first off, let's see, we're going to need a reactor controller to control this whole operation. We're going to make a reactor controller using four reactor casings, one diamond, one redstone, and then two yellowium ingots or atomic sciences enriched uranium. Now we're going to pop a hole uh, somewhere in the front here. I'm just going to put it right there and we're going to get that reactor controller in place trying to stay away from our uh, resonant ender that's going to drop out of there. And we see our reactor controller has gone red and the outline has filled in to, com to complete it and make a full machine. Okay, now we need a couple more items. Of course we're going to need a way to get our power out. So I'm going to go ahead and right next to our controller I'm going to throw in a power tap. You're going to make the power tap by using four reactor casings and four redstone. Go ahead and get that bad boy installed. And now we have a power tap as well. Now of course we need a place to feed our fuel into the reactor and a place to take out the waste that's going to be uh, created in the process. So for that we're going to need two reactor access ports. Now the access ports are pretty easy as well. Four reactor casings, one piston, and one chest is going to get you a reactor access port. Let's go ahead and get those guys slapped into play. And we've got those in. Now one of our um, access ports are going to be input and one are going to be output, which we'll go ahead and select now. We're going to choose uh, the out as the one on the right and the in as the one on the left. Very nice. Now to, to basically we are ready to go at this point. All we need to do is feed in some fuel and then we want to uh, you know have somewhere for our power to go. So just to show you the power of just this little 7x7 reactor, I'm going to go ahead and slap down an empty resonant energy cell right here at the end. We see that bad boy has got no RF in it. And then we're going to go ahead and feed in some yellowium ingots. Let's go ahead and take what we have in storage here and throw these bad boys in. Now as with all the reactors, the hotter it runs, the more power it's going to create. So I went on and threw two stacks of yellowium ingots in. 
and we see nothing happening yet. <laughs> activate. Head back over to your reactor controller and click on activate. You see we're full on fuel. See it is heating up now. Now as it stands right now it's creating 1,600-ish RF per tick which is the equivalent if you're familiar with the build craft power of about 160 MJ's per tick which is quite a bit of juice and we see our resident energy cell is just being pumped full of power very very quickly I'm gonna do a lot of research here coming up in the next uh, couple of days actually probably I want to build a 9 by 9 and even like an 11 or maybe 13 by 13 and check the differences in output of uh, what these reactors are capable of doing uh, without making any adjustments to the control rods at all this reactor will never overheat on you it um, for some reason it is in a safe setting right default without changing any settings and um, I haven't had anyone overheat this one has been running for several days now and uh, no issues there now here the power has dropped down a little bit this one's only at uh, 1100 RF per tick right now but I haven't had that one uh, up and fully running however I've had zero problems with overheating now also in the next couple of days I want to tie this into an ME network that way we're automatically feeding the Yellorium ingots here we're outputting cyanite ingots which are going to be uh, the waste product and then we're going to feed those bad boys directly into here and uh, we're going to run this particular reactor off of cyanite once we get everything squared away you see our resident energy cell is just cranking and what are we producing now we're about what six yeah we're still bouncing around the 1600 to 1650 RF per tick range which is just an awesome amount of power and we're doing that just off of the four short fuel rods of course you can go higher and make the fuel rods bigger um, you can go wider and put in more fuel rods whatever you like to do but this is uh, a quick look at big reactors and its complete awesomeness so thanks for watching click that like button please subscribe to the channel and as I mentioned there's gonna be a lot of research into big reactors coming here really soon everyone that's uh, familiar with my channel and my minecraft play knows that I absolutely love tech it and one of the best things about tech it for me is the power generation and creating these cool contraptions so thanks again and we'll see you soon